So on this episode, uh, Jake and I will be discussing our thoughts on the recent changes to New Zealand's gun laws in the wake of a Christchurch shooting. And uh, if we support them, or if we don't, or maybe we're somewhere in between. So uh, would you like to maybe just give me your perspective, Jacob, and then I'll give you mine, and then we can get into some discussion on it. Well, my whole perspective on this is that we're going about it in the wrong way, because it's just after a mass shooting, the first one in 30 years. I don't feel there's a real need to change the gun laws. I think they're in a good place as they are, and that this is more of a knee-jerk reaction perhaps more of a virtue signal or attempting to push an agenda off the uh, wave of support past a mass shooting that I don't really support the changes. Well, my opinion is kind of different. I mean, in a way, I agree with you. I think it is pushing an agenda, right? As in, political forces are using this tragedy to push an agenda, right? We're agreed on that. But I think where we differ is that I think that I'm actually in support of this agenda in the sense that they, their agenda is banning, uh, you know, semi-automatic like assault rifles, right, with detachable clips, right? Mm-hmm. And I kind of agree with that, right? Uh, so I think that people are taking advantage of this tragedy, but I think almost in a in a good way, right? Mm, so can, they're using the wake up call that is this tragedy to uh, change what gun laws, which perhaps should have been changed years ago. Now the question is: right? Is the shooting a wake up call? Or is it a silver lining in the fact that we this is the first mass shooting we've had in 30 years? What would what would right, happen if we abs- didn't have a mass shooting in 100 years? A thousand years? Would you still have yeah, to change the uh, gun laws then? Yeah, I think so. I think the gun laws should have been changed years ago. And this mass shooting is... I don't want to say an excuse to do it, but it's a, it's just a good time to do it, maybe, is a, is a way to put it, right? Mm. So, right. So, so it's almost like what we were talking about uh, before with, like, this... this these laws, in my opinion, were wrong, right? They, they were not uh, functioning correctly. And finally, that got revealed to us in a very obvious and unfortunate manner through the shooting, right? And now we're taking the opportunity to change them. I think that's... Because in our previous episodes of this uh, shorter form uh, discussion, we've really given the New Zealand government hell for, it, for their handling of the uh, you know free speech aspects of this disaster. But I think mm. in terms of gun control... I think they're actually doing the right thing. I'm going to give them more hell. <laughs> okay, well, do it. And we'll, so, so tell me, so do you think then that uh, the New Zealand... So let's just frame this in quite a specific manner, right? So we're not strawmanning each other. Okay. So you believe that the New Zealand populace as a whole, 18-year-old, 18 and above, right, should have access to semi-automatic rifles like assault rifles? Broadly, yes. And I would like to say... That is because it is it is because of the mass shooting. It, it sounds it sounds like a bad statement, but it's because of the mass shooting. That I think we should be allowed this because for one, it wasn't a New Zealander, and second, like I previously said, it's the first mass shooting in three decades. It's that's a that's a very good statistic, no matter how you look at it. In terms of any nation, it's unrealistic to expect anything to be perfect, no matter how you implement it. Right, but would you not say that it would be? There would be even less mass shootings, and even but and even less shootings in general if we were to remove these guns from our streets and our our, our citizens. There's a potential for that, a potential. right? Because I agree with you. I agree with you that it is a good stat, right? Like not having any sort of like large scale shootings in thirty years is good, right? But that is not that doesn't mean we can't improve, right? As a nation, you know, but it's like saying you know our GDP per capita is forty thousand. It's good, right? But we still are seeking to improve, right? But then the question is, how long would it have to be between mass shootings before you say that's acceptable? Which is what I said before. If we had no mass shooting in 100 years, that's that's still a mass shooting. I think we'd get the exact same reaction. Everyone would be outraged. Uh-huh. Everyone would push to ban and restrict, even though it has been an incredibly long time. I think it's just a knee-jerk reaction. I don't think there's too much thought placed into this or on the actual merits or demerits of the actual thing. Okay, well, shall we go into the merits and demerits of the actual thing? Rather, Let's move away maybe a little bit from a specific event, right? Mm. And go into it a little bit more broadly. So, if we're going to have this discussion, we want to have a pros and cons, right, of uh, the citizen population being able to own semi-automatic weapons, right? Mm-hmm. So, would you like to maybe give me your pros, right? And then I'll maybe hit you with some cons, which I think outweigh them unless you convince me of course okay okay yeah same for you if you convince me i'll probably see my point but 
I would say, one, it would be a good hobby. You know, there's such a thing called a uh, gun tourism, where people often uh, in the U.S. travel to different states in the U.S. to shoot big badass guns. Now, I would say it'd be a lot more fun to shoot semi-automatic rifles than sort of new balls, estrogen-esque, shitty little long rifles. So, so that's one pro. It's a good hobby. Secondly, I'd say, partially for self-defense, although New Zealand's quite strange in this regard, I'm fairly sure you can get charged if you shoot someone with a gun. Am I right? So New Zealand uh, broadly has a policy of escalating aggression. Mm. So, for example, if somebody punches you, you can't stab them. But if somebody stabs you, then you can shoot them. So, sorry, then you can stab them, but you can't shoot them. And if somebody shoots you, then you can shoot back at them. So you can only ever be at the same level of aggression or below. I can't say I right? agree with that, but yeah. It no, is, I don't, I don't agree with that either. Uh, but that is kind of the current, so broadly, the current mm. state of our self-defense law and enforcement of that law. Mm. Uh yeah, but I... also, I would just... Actually, you know what? I'll, I'll let you finish your prose, and then I'll maybe come back and rebut some of it. So, would you like to continue? Yeah, very well. And um, Yeah, so, self-defense. I think even though it's a crime, if someone comes into your house with a with a knife, he's like, I'm gonna kill you, stab out your guts, and rip out your ass, and kill your family, then I'm pretty sure you'd... You'd, you'd probably shoot him. You probably wouldn't care too much about the, um... about the aftermath. You'd just immediately think for the safety of your family and friends. <laughs> and uh, I would say third but lesser point because we've already had a discussion on this and you've moderately convinced me I would say just the the threat of having an armed populace for the protection of your nation and potentially the protection of your civil rights against an authoritarian regime because there's always a threat of that happening right so those are your kind of three big pros for, yeah. uh, for guns Yeah. so okay I'll go through and rebut them and then maybe give some cons as well so for, for the first one, I don't have a rebuttal. I think we all need to admit that guns... Some people, not everyone, but a lot of, of people, course. including myself, think guns are cool, right? Guns are cool, right? Shooting things is... Shooting, uh, you know, targets is fun. You know, you can get better at it. It's a sport, and it's fun. It's cool, mm. right? And certainly, semi-automatic rifles are cooler, in the eyes of many people, than long guns, right? So I think we as a side need to get beyond... Because lots of people like to dress up the fact they're like, yeah, yeah it's for self-defense, whatever, but actually they think guns are cool, and that's fine, right? So I have no rebuttal to your first point. I think guns are cool, and I think it's a legitimate hobby to have, right? Uh, moving beyond that, though, the next two other ones, the next two kind of points you bring up are ones I disagree with. So first of all, in the self-defense argument, I don't think that uh, in New Zealand that's very relevant. For example, you brought up uh, home defense, right? You know, someone coming into your house to to attack you. But how often does that happen in New Zealand? Right? Not very often. And but... I would posit to you that the answer is incredibly rarely, mm -hmm. right? That... Uh, that someone comes into your home, even okay, even somebody coming into your home at all that you don't want is rare. But someone coming into your home to specifically harm you rather than take your stuff is vanishingly rare in this it country, is, yeah. right? And I think that, but even if you go beyond that, say it does happen, right? You're, if you're a responsible gun owner, your gun's in a gun safe, right? Hmm. Separated from ammunition, probably. So how valuable is it actually going to be to you as a self-defense weapon, right? So I would say that the self-defense argument is quite weak right both mm. because your need to defend yourself is going to be limited and the only place you can store your guns is in your own home which means that the only use is home defense right and that mm. and homes like assaults in a home in new zealand are incredibly rare so i think the self-defense argument is quite weak okay i'll see i will that say the, that it, i'll see that the practicality of it is minimal but i think the ethos behind it is quite sad. yes i understand the psychology right that you want to feel as if you could protect your home right but I think on a practical level, as you say, as you agree with me, it doesn't make a ton of sense. But then shall we move on to your last point? Very well. Which I know is you that, don't like this one. Uh, I don't like this one at all. So you claim that uh, the uh, populace being armed with semi-automatic weapons acts sort of like a check on the government, right? Because the government won't pass unpopular policies because they think that they will be rebelled against no. almost. By, or, or, or not almost at all, just rebelled against by these people who are armed right mm, but i would say to you yeah. that this falls down both on a practical and a psychological level on a practical level i think it falls down because no amount of armed populace unless it is everyone and well organized is going to stand up against a nation's military right so all that's going to end up happening is these brave people who are rising up if you will <laughs> will simply be cut down 
by a much more effective and organized fighting force with even better weapons, na- namely the military, right? Mm-hmm. So I think at a practical level, it doesn't make much sense. But even beyond that, on a theoretical level, it doesn't make a lot of sense, because you say it's a check on an authoritarian government, right? Potentially, yes. But is it not a check on any government being able to do what it sees fit, right? Because you may say, ah, the populace would rebel against authoritarian policies, but they may choose, let's say this is a hypothetical thing that happens, right? Yeah. They may choose to rebel against any specific policy, right? That they disagree with. Even if you personally agree with it, right? The so, thing is, does this it, happen much in the United States? Do they rebel over any small changes in law? Right, but That's would they rebel at all? Would they rebel at all, I think, is the, is the significant question, and I think the answer is no. I think the chances that they could, like, assuming just one of the states just goes beyond tyrannical, I mean, there is a, a slight chance of that happening. Albeit minuscule, there's a slight chance of that happening. Right, but so would you not say that even you admit that it's a slight chance, and you must you must agree with me, I hope, with that the practicalities of it are weak, right? Like, in the sense that it's unlikely that any armed populace would successfully install a new government in the face of that previous government's military support, right? Mm, I, I mean, say... just inter- just think back over history, right? How many revolutions have occurred without the support of the military American in that Revolution. nation? But the American Revolution formed its own military, right? Yeah, a militia. They weren't rebelling <laughs> against the government. The gov- but you, 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 the American Revolution is a very good example, because the American Revolution was a revolution of government against government, right? I'm not too so, sure it was government against government. Government of the colony. It was. It I'm was fe- government fairly, of the colony. No, no, no. I'm right? fairly sure it started off as a bunch of self-armed militias who formed together and started essentially a guerrilla war against British troops in America. Except then they were managed by the governments that were there. The state governments, or sorry, the they would have been uh, uh, dominions? No. Uh, anyway, the governments of those various the proto-states, the colonies, sorry, the colony governments were rebelling against the larger British government. Right? That was later, after so the armed it's... militia rebellions. No, no, it was not. But even, okay, so you have one example, right? My point being that in a modern world, militaries win, just win, right? Against, uh, you cannot revolt against a country's military in a practical sense. What about right? New Zealand with such a small military? And, but, and an guerrilla, even smaller amount of people with guns. Assuming unrest, you could probably uh, force the government to make some concessions, assuming a horribly tr- uh, authoritarian regime is in force. But do you not think that this is a very... So you think that it's reasonable for people now to have semi-automatic weapons because of this incredibly slight chance of a success against a possible hypothetical future government? I think it's a factor. That shouldn't be overlooked. I think it's... I agree with you. I think it's a factor, but I think... I don't think it's enough, I think, is kind of what I'm saying. Okay. Right? So... So, basically, we both agree that the self-defense argument is a bit moot, right? Relatively... Maybe a small factor on a psychological level, but it's a little bit moot, right? So, what we have is guns are cool, and maybe a slight amount of check and balance against the government, versus, and now let's get into what, what it's against, right? On our, yeah. you know, so we've got our positives and negatives. I think the negatives are quite significant. The negatives are, first of all, and this you may disagree with, and I, I'm not a big fan of this argument as well, but a psychological thing, right? People mm. feel safer if there's less guns in their country, right? Mm. New Zealanders feel safer, right? So, psychologically, you make New Zealanders feel better, right? Yeah, I can understand So that. that's... It's like the same thing as my second point. Exactly. Exactly that, right? It, it's a psychological factor. And then you have the real literal factors, right? So you get a mass shooting, right? Which could have been prevented if that man did not have access to these guns, right? Didn't and you might reasonably point guns, out that statistically, though. that's incredibly small, right? Yes, he did modify his guns, but would he have had a gun to modify had they been banned? Potentially, he could have, yeah. He could have, but it would have been less likely, right? You, that, that is just fact. Mm. that it would have been less likely but you're, you're right so so the cons are increased fear of violence and possibly increased violence in general and it's not just mass shootings we need to worry about you know uh what if uh gangs and that sort of stuff get access to these weapons as well right so we kind of have a pros and cons sort of situation right guns are cool and make you feel a bit better in your own home and uh maybe a check on future tyrannical governments versus real current real world increases in effective violence and uh, people feeling unsafe, right? So that's kind of what we've got now, like positives versus negatives, right? And to me, the negatives do, at least for semi-automatic weapons, 
Right. Outweigh the positives. So why not just ban all guns? If it makes everyone feel a ton safer, why not just ban all guns? Well, that's an interesting point, and I think that kind of gets to, is like it's very relevant, right? And I think the reason for that is because other guns have more practical use, right? So, for example, shotguns are used extensively, or like pump-action shotguns are used extensively on New Zealand farms for pest control, right? Hmm. So they have a use, a very specific use that, uh, if they didn't exist, would be very hard to fill in other ways, right? Same thing with um, with long guns, right? Used for pest control, and it's a single shot, right? So not only, so we've kind of got this double factor. Well, first of all, they have specific practical uses, but they're also much harder to use for large-scale violence, right? You know, a bolt-action rifle, for example, is very hard to use for large-scale killing, right? I, I, I'm not so sure about that one, to be quite honest. I mean, you could... Um, How do you mean? You, you could set up essentially like a sniper and just fire into an open crowd. Like, assuming there's like a you protest could do rally, you could just do that. It's not stopping but... mass murder. It's just... No, but, and, but also the other thing is it's a perception thing, right? Because people perceive yeah, what like I, I just said. said to be true, right? Yeah. And you might say, well, that's some post-truthist bullshit, Michael, but it is a fact, right? Where what people perceive to be true uh, is relevant, whether it is true or not. And you right? can still easily perform mass murders with a simple knife, you know? It's like, I'm fairly you can, but like... the scale is the scale would be incredibly different. You must admit, um, right? I've so seen, if that man had walked I've into the Jidao Nyo Mosque I've with a knife some... versus with an assault rifle. I've seen some knife knife murder sprees that have been pretty high. Sure, but you you got to admit, right, that an assault rifle is an easier weapon to deal death with than a knife. But beyond that, it's also a more... Co we have more... We have... A, it's easier to control assault rifles than it is to control knives, right? Yeah. So if we tried to ban knives, that would be in in impossible, almost, right? We have so many practical uses, right? Whereas if we ban assault rifles, the only practical use for them is target shooting, really. And perhaps perhaps some hunting in very niche cases, yeah, right? some hunting still, yeah. So, I think that that's why I think that assault rifles, the cons outweigh the pros, right? And that's they're, why I think that it's a, a, a banning assault rifles is, is a reasonable step for a New Zealand government to they're take. Not, they're not assault post, rifles, they're, semi, they're semi-automatic rifles. Well, that isn't a, a semi-automatic rifle. Isn't a assault rifle. Or can be an assault rifle. Libtard owned. Libtard owned. Yeah. Well, you're you're right. So they're not by definition assault rifles, but in this case, I think what most people what are talking everyone, about in this case is assault rifles. Everyone knows I'm fucking with you. Um, although, absolutely, there are actually other stuff being banned, right? Like shotguns, uh, automatic shotguns are being banned as well. Mm. Uh, but I think that in most people's minds, most people are thinking thinking of assault rifles. Mm. Uh, so I think we've kind of gone through this issue. I don't think either of us have convinced each other, but I think we've at least explained it, our perspectives, you know? I think we're more empathetic to each other's positions, though. Yeah, exactly. I can I can understand... I, I disagree with you, but I can understand kind of where you're, where you're coming from. Uh, particularly as a citizen of the UK, uh, who is incredibly wine, wine. worried about that sort of thing happening here. You got a license Do you have a license wine? for this discussion? Yeah. Um, okay, well, thank you very much, everyone, for joining us for this... Uh, slightly more argumentative episode and uh, we'll see you in the next one farewell